All right, let's say some nice things about the Cavs. They do play the Knicks today, so this could be bad luck. My apologies beforehand if they lose. Donovan Mitchell's been cooking. He and Karis LeVert were cooking against the Celtics as they broke my heart the other night. Uh, so with Mitchell, we knew that him and Garland were going to be running a lot of pick and roll with Mobley, Allen, but then Garland went out with the eye injury on the first game of the season. We hope to see him soon. Uh, but as of right now, there's not like a definite thing on that. And so it's been a whole lot of Donovan Mitchell pick and roll with Mobley and Jared Allen and Kevin Love, like I mentioned. I do want to talk about Mitchell's defense as well, but as far as the pick and rolls, he is currently third in the NBA in pick and rolls per game, according to NBA.com. And if a defense is dropping, he's got the pull up and not just the pull up midi, but also the pull up three, which is a huge thing because Cleveland, they didn't just need more shooting. They also needed somebody who was a bit more of a gunslinger from there. And as long as the percentages are good, hey, keep doing it. And of course, Mitchell's been one of the better three-point shooters the last couple of years. Even though he hasn't crossed like 40% the last couple of years from three, it's the amount that he takes on top of so many of them are off the dribble. The interesting thing to me with those screens is how Mobley and Allen are spaced out in relation to each other. So a lot of the time it'll be like if Mobley is screening for Donovan Mitchell on let's say, the right wing, then Jared Allen will be on the left dunker spot, and then vice versa. But with Mobley, he's also had some times where he's been spotting up from the three-point line, and that's been a bit of a conversation. Mobley's jump shot, he made a three against the Celtics, he made a step back mid-range against the Magic. It still hasn't been a whole lot of jump shots for Mobley, but the very early signs so far this season are like, eh, it's intriguing. Now, the other thing that happens too with those is sometimes... They'll have Mobley and Allen screening like up top for Mitchell and you think it's going to be a double screen, but then one of them will be the actual screen and the other one will cut to the basket at the same time. And the risk there is that you just got a whole bunch of bodies running to the rim as Donovan Mitchell decides what he's going to do between a pull up or attack the basket or um, it might be a kick to the corner or whatever. But I think if the timing is just right on the cuts and everything, it actually kind of works. It also helps that Mobley and Allen are more than just finishers. I mean, Mobley has had a number of baskets this year where... I mean, sure, he's going to get his dives to the rim, he's going to get his alley-oops or whatever, but he's also going to get his times where maybe he ends up with the ball around the free throw line and it's one or two dribbles in either direction into a hook shot or a runner type of shot or whatever. Uh, when he ends up with the ball in the post, sometimes he's going to bust out a nice looking hook shot or a little turnaround jumper. I mean, hell, one of his early buckets of the game against the Celtics, he just takes Derek White off the dribble from the three-point line and basically just muscles through him, puts his back into him, and gets a layup out of it. And as far as Allen, I mean, the hook shots are there. And I also think that while you're not just going to dump the ball repeatedly to Jared Allen in the post like Joel Embiid or Jokic, if he ends up with the ball in the post, there can be time where like, he'll bust out a little drop step or whatever, and it's like, oh, okay. So it, the, the play isn't dead if it ends up in his hands in this situation. Now, as far as Mitchell's passing, because of, the, of course that was a conversation this offseason, as Mitchell's stock dropped like way too low in my opinion yes I saw his defense against the Mavericks and we'll talk about the defense in a second here but uh you know against the Magic he had like a bunch of great skip passes to the opposite corner where they were just like telegraphing the help pretty hard in the Bulls game there were two Mitchell assists that really caught my eye one was Jared Allen set him a down screen and then he comes around it and Io's behind him and Vooch is in between him and uh, Jared Allen on the dive he just lobs it right up to Jared Allen another one where he gets a screen from Mobley at the top of the key he rejects the screen and there's like four bulls or three bulls in the paint because they were kind of playing off of Mobley but Jared Allen's just so freaking huge right at the dunker spot he just throws it to him anyway over Caruso he gets a, a layup out of that pretty much man I, I don't think you could have asked for a better Donovan Mitchell after five games he did miss a lot of shots against the Wizards but okay I think JB Bickerstaff should be given credit because I feel like this offense could be a mess in another coach's hands just because you have two big guys who are not like three-point shooters. I would also like to point out, one, a play that I tweeted against, I don't remember what team it was, where Mobley and Allen ran an elbow pick and roll that resulted in Mobley assisting it to Allen on the roll. And another play, which I also don't remember what game exactly it was, but Allen was on the elbow and then Mobley cut to the rim and it was an alley-oop between them. So it's just good stuff with those two. Let's talk about the defense. So, of course, Mobley and Allen are awesome. We know this much. And what's interesting to me is they're not always just like in a drop. Like sometimes they're higher up on the screen. Sometimes they're switching even. There was a play where Jared Allen was guarding a Bradley Beal Perzingis screen. He was up on the level of the screen, so Beal couldn't just like get an easy pull up on him. 
And then as Beal bounce passes to Przingis, in that exact moment, Jared Allen turns his hips and then blocks Przingis. It's like, holy hell. And there's another guy who can do that too. Mobley had one block against Franz in the Magic game where it was just kind of frightening because he met him at the rim and they both like collided in midair. I thought somebody was going to get hurt. It was, it was something. Now, as far as Mitchell's defense, so against the Celtics, he was typically guarding Malcolm Brogdon, Marcus Smart, Derek White, Sam Hauser. Against the Magic, he was typically on Cole Anthony. He had a couple of possessions on Paolo and uh, Franz as well, though. Against the Wizards, he was almost exclusively on Monte Morris or DeLon Wright. And overall, I would say, like, yeah, there's there's a couple of specific plays you could point out. Like, there was one Marcus Smart 3 where he fell asleep a little bit, and then he didn't have the best closeout. He also had another closeout later on in that game that was much better, where he was helping at the free throw line, and then in an instant got out to Marcus for, for like, a wing three-pointer that he missed. Um, you know, he fell asleep on one little backdoor cut against the Magic. I think Paolo picked on him at least once or twice in that game. But overall, I think... You feel fine with his defense. I don't think he's breaking their defense. I think when he's involved in screen actions and it's Mobley or Allen in a drop and he's just got to get around a screen, basically, I think he's doing okay. I'm pretty sure the Cavs made this trade knowing, like, yeah, we're not getting a defensive player here. We're getting someone who we can hope is good enough for our front court to clean up all the messes. As for the rest of the team, so Karis LeVert just dropped 41 against the Celtics, making a whole bunch of tough shots. I still haven't fully recovered from it. Before that, his efficiency was kind of rough, but also his passing has been interesting. I mean, we'd have to see what it looks like when Garland is back. Not as far as his passing ability, but how often he's handling the ball. I mean, for lack of a better description, he's just making good reads. I mean, he'll get a screen from Jared Allen. He'll attack on the left wing. Jared Allen will just roll to right in front of the basket. He kicks it to him, and it's a little flip shot. Chetty, he has been a flamethrower from three so far, as well as Dean Wade. And uh, as for the other potential wing in Isaac Okoro, who has started two games. Look, he is a defense player first, but he's got to do better than averaging one and a half points on 27 true shooting. I'm not lying to you. Those are his numbers so far through five games. So yeah, that's Cleveland. They look good, man.